In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and a very warm welcome to all of you worshipping at home in Solihull Parish on this third Sunday of Easter, when we continue to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, his victory over sin and death, and his power in our own lives. Today the reflection will be given by Charlotte, our parish ordinant, who also happens to be my wife, and we look forward to hearing her reflection on the Gospel. So now we say the words of the prayer of preparation together, and if you would like to join in at home, please do. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil, and confess our sins in penitence and faith. 
Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May God, our Father, forgive us our sins and bring us to the fellowship of his table with his saints forever. Amen. The Collect for the Third Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladdened the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life, and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day, Two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he, would, he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were there with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us when he was talking to us on the road? while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their, their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Our Gospel reading today highlights for me two very important things. The first is the way in which Cleopas describes the story of the resurrection. He is astonished that this stranger on the road has not heard about what has gone on in Jerusalem over the previous days, and so he retells the story. What fascinates me is his description of the women's discovery. Sure, he doesn't name names, but he thinks he's talking to a perfect stranger. But the women that discovered Jesus to be gone are, to Cleopas, women of our group. We often talk about the women who travelled with Jesus, who listened to Jesus, who provided for Jesus, but we don't link them with the disciples in the same way, as if they're not part of the in crowd. But Cleopas doesn't delineate between those in and those out, he refers to the disciples who had then gone to the tomb and found it just as the women who have described as some of those who were with us. Just a few verses before, these disciples had previously understood what the women had experienced as an idle tale. In Luke's account, we only have Peter listed as the person who goes to the tomb, but surely Peter is more than someone who was travelling with the group. Cleopas retelling of the events on Easter Sunday subverts 12. He tells Jesus a story of a large group of followers, which includes the women, and moreover it confirms the witness testimony of the women as completely believable. Cleopas, an otherwise unremarkable character, tells the story we know so well in a new way. The second important thing to notice about this reading is the way in which Jesus reveals himself to the two, which are correctly, and then goes through the prophet, the prophecies that they should have known were about him. They convince him to stay with them rather than continue his journey. At the dinner table, he takes bread, blesses it, breaks it and gives it to them. A sudden realisation and he vanishes before their eyes. They do not recognise Jesus as he teaches them the scriptures. They do not recognise Jesus when he tells them off, but they do recognise him in a simple act of hospitality, an act we now reflect in the sacrament of the Eucharist. In this time of isolation, where we don't have access to Jesus through the Eucharist in the same way, we do not stop recognising Jesus. This passage highlights to us that when we are unable to see Jesus in the ways that we might expect, Jesus will be there in the unexpected. Jesus has the power to make the ordinary extraordinary. If eating a meal with strangers can be the most profound moment, then helping our neighbours in a difficult time is also made holy by the presence of Jesus. Staying home is an act of holy sacrifice, especially as we are not made to be isolated. It has significant cost to us. But Jesus blesses what we do for the sake of others, just as he blessed the bread that he was given in hospitality. Friends, this passage shows us that we are all called to be part of the group proclaiming the resurrection. It is not something to be done by a select few, and the witness of those who are deemed less important by society is fundamental to our witness as a church. It shows that Jesus will turn up when we least expect him, especially in the banality of isolation. Jesus will reveal himself to us and change us in this time, so that when we gather together again, we will have amazing stories to tell each other. And why wait until then? Tell us what Jesus has been doing for you and for those around you in this time, so that we can share far and wide the goodness of our God who dwells with us, especially in the loneliness of isolation. Amen. Let us pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low. 
that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. Comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick, and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work many will be restored to health. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, Help me to trust you. Help me to know that you are with me. Help me to believe that nothing can separate me from your love revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with me today as I offer myself to you. Hear my prayers for others and for myself and keep me in your care. Amen. Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace to you from his Son who is our peace. Peace to you from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. Almighty God, in union with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may ever be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate me from you. Let me live and die in your love. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray for God's blessing upon us all and all whom we love. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always.